Hi everyone, and in today's video, we're going to start the VR spaceship in the PSO Law playthrough. Hi guys, and welcome back to another video for Fantasy Star Online Blue Burst. In today's video, we're going to continue the Law playthrough of Episode 2, and we're going to do our first quest in the VR spaceship zone. So in the last episode, we defeated Barbara to complete the Hunter's Exam for our Temple. Now, one thing I forgot to cover quickly in that episode is there is actually a log entry for Barbara that you get after you defeat it, which basically explains that Barbara is essentially a, a simulation of what Durolle could potentially evolve into. It, it's kind of based on Durolle's DNA and different evolutionary paths it could have taken. Another thing that someone pointed out in one of the previous videos is that apparently the temple is based on some data from Coral. So it's probably the only way of, of seeing what some of the architecture on Coral might have looked like. Uh, apparently it's kind of based on historical records of Coral. So I just wanted to set that out there now just so you're aware because I did miss that in my temple playthrough. So we'll get started with the first government quest for our spaceship. So welcome Hunter Taker. The next test will take place on a new VR field. We've been in the middle of analysing data to find our next search point. We're in need of investigators to go on these missions. You can get the relevant information from my assistant. I expect good things of you. Let me give you the details on this test. This test takes place in VR Spaceship Alpha. This is the second round of the assessment tests. Following your operator's directions, battle the hostile creatures within and eliminate them as you head for the goal to clear the VR field. Well, to tell you the truth, the temple tests were conducted for one main reason. It was to weed out the poor candidates for our future lab missions. The VR spaceship tests are based off our latest data and are designed to really make sure you're fit for our tasks. In other words, this is where the real challenge begins. The VR spaceship is much more of a hazardous testing ground. Please be careful. The ironic thing about that is that once you get to Ultimate, Temple is actually more dangerous than Spaceship, I find. Mainly because of Temple is full of things that have Megid. Admittedly, Megid is not that dangerous to deal with if you've got decent gear to resist it, but if it's your first time in Ultimate, you'll probably find Temple a little bit more awkward. So we'll hit the spaceship and we get one of the best themes in the game. Trick track is so good. <laughs> and we've got another message pod from Ellie. Transmission from the VR test field spaceship area alpha. Accessing Hunter Taker. Taker, this is the lab. Ellie here. Contacting from spaceship area alpha. You're finally at the second field of the Hunter's exam. After you clear this field, the Hunter's exam will be done. So do your best and good luck. So a really simple message to start us off. Do we have any information on anything here? So as usual, we'll just quickly go for the enemies that we've got so far. So we've got Gilchik. Let's see, Gilchik. Gilchik, mobile security machine used by Pioneer One. Its AI shows damage from a viral infection linked to Raggle's tunnels. Now, what it means by that is the, the tunnels, I, I believe it means where Durol Lair was. So the, the viral infection kind of got spread through the tunnels and ended up infecting all the AI of the machines, which is why they're all berserking minds in episode one. They move in groups. Watch out for its long range laser attack. And we've got Savage Wolf. Next, Savage Wolf. Savage Wolf, native creature, lives on the surface of Ragol. Travels in packs with an alpha leading the pack. By killing the alpha, you can demoralize the pack. The alpha can be recognized by its color. It has a blue coloration. I need to do this in ultimate again, just to see if they change that for ultimate, because in ultimate, the alpha is red. We call the alpha a barbarous wolf. You should always try to attack the alpha first. Then you'll have an easier time against the remaining pack. 
And we've got Panams. Let's see, Panams. Panams, mutant life form, classified as an altered beast. Subterranean creature with a tough exoskeleton. Splits into two. Unique creatures. Guess that guess that's the best time to attack one. Wait, there's something written here. Evolution pattern updated. Huh? I wonder what the heck that means. So the only difference I know of with Pan Arms in episode two. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I know that in episode one they have really really high defense when they're joined together. But in episode two they don't have that. They're actually really easy to kill. So does, is that the evolutionary update? Because they've evolved to get worse. There might be other changes I'm not aware of. Uh, next we have Del Saber. Okay, Del Saber. Del Saber, decellular sub life form. Highly intelligent. Its arms are capable of attacking and defending. Hmm. When a Del Saber decides on its prey, it shows a single minded mentality. Guess this means that this creature is rather obsessive. Reminds me of an ex-boyfriend. <laughs> I guess you have to be extra careful if you're the target. Man, this gives me the creeps. So the interesting thing about Del Sabers is that is actually a feature in the game. So Del Sabers actually are actually programmed to target specific players. There's kind of a, a hierarchy that they operate on. There's a couple of enemies that do it. I think Gibbles does it as well. Um, where it basically picks certain characters depending on traits. So I believe, I think Del Sabers tend to go for forces and male characters, I think. I could be wrong on that. But they definitely do single out certain characters. And then we have Garans. Next, Garans. Garans, assault machine used by the military of Pioneer 1. Its AI shows damage from a viral infection linked to Ragol's tunnels. The Garans is equipped with plated armor and has guided missiles. Hmm. This machine may look cool to most people, but I think it looks dumb. I prefer the smart, sleek looking designs, they're more efficient. Let's see. Looks like it contains the latest military data. And then I'll quickly check the field. A lot of this will just be information we don't need to know. So look carefully in the far distance. All you see is a nice view. Haha. <laughs> you might find a switch for the hallway in the next room. So what that's telling you basically is that the way the spaceship is constructed, you can see, you can actually see other walkways. So occasionally you'll be able to see things from different vantage points. However, it is sort of telling you about the view as well. And you can see we do actually have a view. It's kind of hard to see here, but if I use the, the free cam on Affinia. You can see we do have like what appears to be a massive forest underneath us. So again, this is all VR, so it's all theoretical, but um, there is definitely some kind of background here. It's kind of hard to tell what it is exactly, but maybe this is meant to just be a, a generic part of Raggle, potentially. So do we have anything else from this before we get going? Yeah, so nothing there really. So we can get started. So again, from a law perspective, there's not a huge amount to go on here. And um, this is obviously just again a VR simulation. So you see we've got a pan arms here, and we can hurt it normally. So they, they don't I mean this is only normal admittedly, but in episode 1, they have a lot higher defense and take a lot less damage. 
So I'm not really sure if there's any other differences with the Pan Arms. So that's what I mean about taking out the Alpha. It makes the, the others do um, Jelen and Zala on themselves, if you didn't know. So this ultimately is very similar to our first Temple quest, where we're just going through, just killing everything as we go. There's, again, not a whole lot to this at this point. And again, the purpose of this is just to try and weed out the, the Hunters that are not fit to take on the task that the lab wants us to do. So by doing this, they're basically filtering out until they've only got the best of the best left. So we can't go that way. Another message pod from Ellie. It's Ellie. How's it going? This spaceship area should be much larger than the temple. You should expect more creatures in the field here. It'll be more difficult, so be careful. So Ellie's just more or less just willing us on at this point. Another little funny thing is, when I used to play this when I was younger, I always used to think that these looked a bit like Xboxes. Which works because, you know, PSO was actually released on the Xbox as well, so... <laughs> I'm not going to say it was deliberate because it wasn't, obviously, but... So we get to the last room of this quest, and again, this has just been very similar to the first temple quest that we did. So this is just work your way to the end, defeat the enemies as you go. This is more or less just introduced new to the new area. Now I say new in inverted commas because if you play PSO, you'll know that Spaceship and Temple are technically not new areas. Um, they were actually treated, they were in previous versions, but as battle maps. They were in GameCube and Xbox as playable areas like this. But the previous versions, I believe it might have been version 2, possibly. They were released as battle mode maps. Again, please correct me if I'm wrong on that, but as far as I'm aware, they were, they were introduced in version 2 as battle maps that you couldn't actually put items on. Then once we got to GameCube and Xbox, they actually added them as playable maps that you could actually do runs in. But generally, I do quite like Spaceship. I really like the aesthetic of it. I also love how in these in these rooms in particular here, we'll probably get a good look at it once the part actually ends, but you can see like there's screens in the background that keep showing different imagery. And it rotates through quite a few different things. So at the minute obviously it's shown as Raggle and it's shown as the explosion on Raggle. So we just need to find the terminal now. Yeah, but you can see, if you look at the, the background screens here, you can see we've got these images of, of Raggle with the explosion on the surface. That's obviously the explosion from episode one. It does also occasionally, it'll show you Pioneer as well. It also shows you Raggle without the explosion as well. And there, you can also see it also shows you Pioneer as well. Whether that's Pioneer 1 or Pioneer 2, I'm not sure. Um, as far as I'm aware, both of them can look the same anywhere, so you probably, it'd probably be hard to tell which is which. But I just thought, I've always liked this about Spaceship, how it shows different images on these screens. It's not just these ones either as well. There are also ones that show you forest or caves, for example. Um, so it's quite cool seeing these projected on the screens in the background. So we've got our final thing from Ellie. So enemies eradicated, areas secured, both confirmed. Hello, Taker. This is the lab. Ellie speaking. I've confirmed your exam results, Taker. Mission cleared. You're right on track to clear the second half of the test. The exams will be over before you know it. We'll be disconnecting the VR link temporarily, so please head back now. So this quest very much an introduction just to the VR spaceship area. So as usual, we'll report to Natasha. Good work, Hunter Taker. 
I have no complaints regarding your test results. I'd like you to take the next test then. Take the time that you need to get ready. I'll be waiting. Here are your examination results. You pass. That's to be expected since you did defeat the Barbara. But this doesn't mean you've met my standards yet. Please take the next test. Please go to the counter and sign up. Thank you very much. So with that, we finished the first area of Spaceship. So since that last test was quite short, we'll, we'll do the next one as well. So we'll do 6-2. Thank you as always, Hunter Taker. I'd like you to keep going and take the next test. Please get the test details from my assistant, Dan. So we've now actually been given his... I think that's the first time you actually get his name for the assistant. So this is her assistant, Dan. Try your hardest to attain the results that we're expecting. You show a lot of promise. Now what you might have noticed over the course of these tests is that Natasha does feel like she's warming to you. So at the start she's extremely formal but she's now starting to, she's introduced you to uh, her aide's name. And she's now saying things like you show a lot of promise. So it kind of feels like she's starting to come around to you a little bit. Dan on the other hand still seems very very reluctant at the minute. Let me give you the details on this on this test. Test takes place in VR Spaceship Beta. It's a test of your personal adaptability potential. In other words, teamwork. Following your operator's directions, battle the hostile creatures within, and eliminate them as you head for the goal to clear the VR field. That's... Oh, I almost forgot. If during the test anyone should end up being incapacitated, the test will immediately end. You'll need to make sure that you help your teammates out to succeed. The VR spaceship is a much more of a hazardous testing ground. Please be careful. So a little bit of added... I'm not going to say risk because it's normal, we're not going to die, but... Particularly if you're doing this in Ultimate, you would need to be careful because there are things in Spaceship that have Megades in Ultimate. So you would need to be careful to make sure you don't faint because if you faint, you instantly fail this quest. So as usual, we get a message from Ellie at the start. Ready for the next area? Take her. Be careful. I don't know why you get the sort of bars, like the cinematic bars at the bottom there, as if there's going to be a cutscene and then nothing happens. <laughs> also, before we go in there, do we have any more entries? We do. We've got one more for Chaos Sorcerer. So, okay. Chaos Sorcerer. Chaos Sorcerer, decellular sub life form. Highly intelligent. Its movement seems to have a technique-like quality. The Chaos Sorcerer's crystals allow it to attack or heal. You know what that means, right? You better focus on targeting one crystal when you attack. It'll be easier for you to defeat it this way. The funny thing is, once you get to a high level, you just focus on the Sorcerer itself and kill it before it does anything. <laughs> we also do have a bit more data here as well, so I'll see if any of these are relevant lore. So that's about the Ruins Trap. It's interesting that she says that the, the pillar traps, which are the ones that pop up and attack you, um, were actually set by Pioneer 1. And she actually says that she would recommend destroying any that you find on Ragal, I guess to make it safer for anyone else who goes down there. So a lot of these are just about different traps. And she's just letting you know as well that you can get attacked in the in the hallways. So I did actually have to reload this quest for me because um, none of the enemies actually spawned in the first room for some reason. Now whether you want to say I failed the hunter's exam because of that, I'll leave that for you to decide. <laughs> it's a weird bug with this server sometimes where the enemies just won't spawn. So you can see here in the background we do have this little image of Ragol, so you can see the central dome. We've also got the cave system here as well. 
So you can see these, the screens that make up the walls in this area. They do show a lot of different scenes from Ragal. It's kind of cool that they're still showing you all these different areas from episode 1 that you've obviously probably been through if, you, if you're playing through episode 2. Because I imagine most people who play episode 2 for the first time have probably already done episode 1. Just a nice little touch just to sort of tie episode 2 to the original episode. So in Spaceship Beta we get a slightly different view of the background. So we've got this kind of metropolis background which is obviously not really similar to anything we've seen in PSO before. I guess though if you're on Pioneer 2 and you look out across certain parts of Pioneer 2 you can see that there is a big city there. So maybe this is meant to represent the city of Pioneer. Um, I can't really think what else but this would represent because I don't know if Coral was ever this technologically advanced. I mean they were obviously advanced to the point of being able to make spacecraft so potentially. But it's hard to sort of pin this to, to what exactly this background is meant to represent. Okay, so as we get a little bit into the quest, um, so far it has just been more or less just the same as the last one, just defeating enemies as we go. We do have another message pod from Ellie. Tega, this is the lab. Hi, this is Ellie speaking. How are you doing? Just a little more to go and you'll finish the Hunter's exam. The lab's information and analysis for the new point is proceeding well. We've finally been able to track the coordinates that were sent out. So if you remember at the start of episode 2 we were told that they'd received some coordinates from a new area of Raggle that apparently matched a survivor from Pioneer 1. But we know from the events of episode 1 from the previous law playthrough that we've done that no one really survives episode 1. However, again, this could take place at roughly the same time that the events of episode 1 are happening. So perhaps they don't know there's no survivors yet. And we found some sort of large scale installation. I'm worried because it means that things could be even more dangerous. Oops, I shouldn't be talking about this. I'll get reprimanded again. Oh well. Anyway, I'm sure you're bored with my chatting. You only have a little more to go, so go for it. Okay, so it sounds like the, the work that the lab is doing to discover more about this distress signal that we got is proceeding pretty well and they found some kind of installation on Raggle in a new area of Raggle. So potentially the distress signals maybe come from there. We don't really know anything about this installation at this point. So it is just very, very basic information we're getting at the moment. All we know at this point is that there is some kind of large scale installation on the surface, which we didn't know about before. So again, just like the previous quest, we end with the room where we just need to defeat all the enemies. So very, very easy final room. Actually a lot easier than the previous one, to be honest. It seemed like there was a lot less enemies as well. So as usual, just need to find the terminal, which will be through here. And we'll have another message from Ellie. Transmitted test record. Enemies eradicated, area secured, both confirmed. Hello Taker, this is the lab. Ellie speaking. I've confirmed your exam results, Taker. That's two spaceship tests cleared now. We'll be disconnecting the VR link temporarily, so please head back now. So we head back to the lab. And as usual, we're reporting again to Natasha. Thanks for taking the test, Hunter Taker. Hmm. These scores are better than I expected. You might be just what we need to conduct our information gathering. Nevertheless... I want you to take another test. Granted, we might be too picky, but we can't risk anything due to the importance of our projects. Undertaker, there's just a little more testing to undergo. Get yourself ready for it. I'll be waiting. You've passed the test. Based on your exam results, it's obvious that the Chief thinks quite highly of you. So like I said in the previous one, it does seem like Natasha is starting to warm to us a little bit. But. I'm not allowing myself to be convinced yet. Dan is obviously a lot more hesitant. 
I guess because those two know the, the gravity of what they're dealing with on the surface and they know that they only need the absolute best hunters for it. So they're very, very hesitant to accept anyone to take this task on and they're wanting to make sure that you're the absolute best they can get. The test is over. We're preparing the next test. Please sign up for it at the counter. Thank you. So Dan is still very, very formal and still doesn't really want to commit to... He doesn't really want to trust us too much yet because he still wants to see more from us in the tests before he's happy with our performance. Um, but Natasha does seem like she's starting to think more kindly of us and is starting to think that maybe we're the hunter that she can rely on to take this challenge. So we'll end that video there for today. In the next video, we'll try and get through the, the rest of Spaceship and finally get to the end of all the VR tests. And that's where episode two really starts to open up more. Again, from a law perspective, it is very hard to single out anything in particular for Spaceship at this point because we are dealing with a VR simulation. Um, it is very, very small little pieces of information that we're getting fed at this point. But we are at least starting to get a little bit more about what's happening on the surface of Raggle. So in the next episode, we'll complete Spaceship and we'll try and get to the bottom of these VR tests. As usual, if you've enjoyed watching, please consider liking, subscribing or joining as a member. Normally do two videos a week and I stream once on a weekend as well and it's normally PSO or another fantasy star that we stream. You can also follow me on X at Section Skyli and you can also join us on the Discord as well which I'll leave a link to in the description. As always, thanks for the support as usual and see you guys in the next video.